In this video, we discuss with the community about dual wielding, co-op campaign master chiefs, Halo Infinite release date speculation, campaign free roam, and the age old conversation of sprint in Halo. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again. Today we're doing a little bit of a Q&A kind of video with the community here. I went onto my community page and I asked a question about do you have any Halo Infinite questions or topics you'd like to discuss? Top rated and most interesting comments will make it into a video and this is that video. So if you want to be featured into the next Q&A video guys make sure you subscribe to keep an eye out for whenever those community posts do go live. I do use that quite often guys to keep yourself in the know of everything going on with Halo beyond just news update videos because sometimes they're just little tidbits of news that I like to share through there as well and the only time you ever get a chance to see those community posts is if you're subscribed to the channel so let's get right into the content here crunchy bombed asks do you think we are going to get dual wielding back it wasn't in the reveal but they do have more time to work on it now this was the top rated question in the whole thing so i definitely have to answer this one guys and i personally do not think we will be getting dual wielding back in this so after watching the eight minute trailer that we had there was no prompt showing up about dual wielding and i think there were some weapons that could possibly be do weld if that's even a word uh throughout the whole thing we never got that prompt come up for example when chief was using that mangler right there there was no prompt to pick up a plasma pistol as well when he killed those grunts rocking up the hill right there so my assumption is i do not think we'll see it coming back in here uh 343 has never had a dual wielding game or worked on a dual wielding game even really besides halo 2 anniversary but obviously it had dual wielding in that game because as a major feature in Halo 2. It's also a little bit easier just to balance out weapons without having dual wielding and also kind of helps develop weapons specifically in mind for specific scenarios when it comes to developing them to fit better niches within the sandbox. Obviously, it's fun, it's badass, it's a cool thing to do. I love doing it personally in Halo 2 and Halo 3. You get some interesting combos that might actually work out, but for the most part, I don't really like using it really in the first place. I feel like it's just kind of more of a gimmick rather than a useful tool. So no, I don't think we will see Halo Infinite feature dual wielding, but it could be a custom game option as well, which that way I think would be perfect for it. Another question from Milesy Pop. Do you think we'll get playable co-op characters or chief clones in Halo Infinite? Now, if you guys remember from Jerry Hook did mention how there is going to be two player split screen, four player co-op online for campaign, which is a great addition. That's kind of something that I think is very needed for Halo. Uh, I think I could have sworn I heard or read something saying that uh, with co-op, you'll be able to come in with your custom Spartan which I think that would be really awesome though I will try doing research online trying to find it I just all I could find was just them stating that the co-op situation right now with Halo Infinite so I think having your custom Spartan as your co-op character I think would be perfect I don't want to see clone chiefs I like to see your own Spartan being put in the campaign that's something that Reach did really well and I thought it's such a cool feature to make it more like your character you in the game kind of feeling and with how much inspiration Reach is getting into Halo Infinite I can kind of see that happening. I'd really like to have it happen, uh, though for the most part, I think all we know for sure is that it's two player split screen, four player co-op online, and I think that's all we really, really know for it uh, right now. But I could have sworn I read something saying that your custom Spartan will be co-oping along with Master Chief in the campaign. And of course, you're gonna need some awesome gear, right? Well, one way to get some awesome gear is checking out Loot Crate. Loot Crate is kind of like a fun bi-monthly mystery box that gets sent to your house that has different kinds of of fun little gadgets and gears that you would like to have for yourself. Previously, Halo actually partnered with Loot Crate to have the legendary Loot Crate. We had some awesome, cool content from that, but there's so much more than just Halo stuff. They have crates for gaming specifically, like gaming in general, Destiny, Fallout, Elder Scrolls, so much more different things for movies, like Marvel movies, Rick and Morty, WWE. They have just general sci-fi, clothing wear, anime stuff as well if you're into that kind of thing and also Harry Potter. Loot Crate recently sent me a box with some just general gaming goodies. It was pretty fun to check out. Again, guys, if you want to get some awesome gear, make sure to use the code KEVIN15 for 15% off your purchase. Plus, it really helps support this channel. Mail Dross, unpopular opinion. I believe Halo Infinite should be released in the fourth quarter of 2021 giving 343 more time to optimize the game. This one I'm actually kind of thinking is going to happen. Uh, for how quiet 343 has been since they announced the 2021 delay, 
uh, with no time frame at all mentioned within that announcement. Because uh, previously, like with, I think, The Last of Us and with Cyberpunk, when they announced their delays, they at least gave a time frame of when to expect the game afterwards. We didn't get that with Halo Infinite. They just let us know that's getting delayed. I think right now they're still playing out their options, trying to figure out if they could do a spring release, a summer release, or a fall release, and what features can be added into the game, what optimizations can happen. Obviously, the longer they have to develop it, the more feature-rich and more well-optimized the game can be. Obviously, that means the community has to wait that much longer. And with the shooter genre looking a bit competitive in 2021, as I believe there's a rumored Battlefield 6 happening probably at the end of that year. Uh, we, of course, there's always Call of Duties that are happening. And then you throw a Halo on top of that. Just those three alone. That's a lot of division between people trying to spend their money and what they want to play. And also with the recent addition of Joseph Staten coming onto the team, with his necessary work that need to be done to make sure the game can have a proper narrative, because he's like kind of like a, a curated narrative lead kind of person at Microsoft Game Studios. So he just kind of hops from project to project to kind of make sure that the story is cohesive, everything kind of makes sense. He's kind of like the guy who goes like, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. I think they give him enough time to get into the groove of develop, helping develop Halo's story and you know, put enough of a effort into it to where it can actually make a difference. I just feel like the game would have to release in the fall of 2021. Releasing in that time frame as well helps give more time for flighting process, which we can get more time to do that. So we can provide more feedback to 343 to set up Halo Infinite to be the game that we want it to be. But yeah, I don't think your opinion's unpopular. I think it's very just and it would make sense. And I think it'd be actually probably maybe even the best thing to do for Halo Infinite to release in 2021 fall to give enough time for the community to get feedback and do the flighting process and optimize the game better. Nathan Martinez asks, what is a game mode that you'd like to see return in Halo Infinite? Now, I'm more of just kind of always been like a Slayer kind of guy. I've always just like my 4v4 Slayer, my 4v4 Capture the Flag. That's kind of like the bread and butter Halo for me. And everything else to me is kind of external. Um, obviously, we need BTB on launch. Uh, I think that's kind of a given at this point right now. Uh, unless they want to try to expand BTB into something bigger, I'd be cool with that as well. Um, but I think one kind of specific game mode I would love to see come back in some kind of capacity would be Invasion. I never played it that much during the Reach days because I just wanted to play my social Slayer. And then when the Reach came to the MTC on PC, I actually got a chance to actually put some significant time in and play it. And I thought, wow, this game mode is amazing. I cannot believe it was only in Halo Reach. Because the cool thing I love about it too is that they, uh, not only does it have like kind of attack defense mode, which is something that Halo's always, I feel like, kind of been weak on when it comes to game modes yeah there's one flag capture the flag and bomb and stuff like that but i never really liked those game modes too much uh but i love invasion absolutely love invasion and also the the thematic of it as well where the elites that you play as are true scale like you know they're like what eight feet tall or something like that your spartans like you know six something five, seven foot something tall and also you have different weapon types and there's advantages and disadvantages and different abilities as well it's a really cool like rock paper scissors kind of mode to kind Kind of combat each other and i think it's really just an awesome mode i would love to see it come back and it's something you can probably expand on too and do more with it and then sharif if i make sure i pronounce that correctly what do you think about playable elites and do you support the idea of playable brutes i think there's been enough uproar from the community when it comes to playable characters within halo's multiplayer that i think we'll get playable elites back i mean it's in the lore wise it's back in there as well uh as them you know elites join the banish and things like that can we see playable brutes Roots? I think possibly, but I would like to personally like to see this happen for just the custom game options. Uh, not really so much for in-game multiplayer kind of stuff. I like having Spartan on Spartan. That's kind of my thing. I just like it more. Uh, if you want to have elites and brutes in the multiplayer, I think something like Invasion that we mentioned previously would really help give people that ability to play as those characters without it being kind of just weird and funky kind of feeling while also feeling true to the lore of the game as well to kind of give much more atmosphere. And because a big issue with that is that you know brutes are like nine feet tall. Elites are like eight feet tall. Spartans are like six and a half, seven feet tall kind of thing. And to have that larger character difference within the multiplayer, it just would be really weird hitboxes and movements and stuff like that. It'd be, and then you have to probably shrink down those elites and brutes to fit the sizes properly, like it did with Halo 3 with uh, playable elites compared to Spartans. But the, the hitboxes are always weird. 
people don't people playing as like Spartans just shooting at dinos, they don't like it. And I feel like people playing as dinos just kinda like it because it's a really you know unique kind of feature to kind of customize your character. Uh, they did state with Halo Infinite that if you liked Halo Reach's customization, you'll love Halo Infinite's customization. But to summarize, I feel that just playable brutes and elites, either if you have a specific game mode designed for it, like Invasion of some sort, or you leave it into custom games. Dr. Xbox Live, do you think there will be outrageous slash wild skins in multiplayer? This actually is one thing that kind of concerns me a little bit as Halo 5 certainly dabbled in that a little bit, especially with the weapon skins, with like the pizza skin, the cat skin, uh, just various other kind of wacky things like that. Most of them are rather serious and were pretty awesome to look at. Uh, we had our first taste of new customization with the monster skins, which do look pretty awesome. And I was afraid that seeing like monster energy weapon skins was gonna be like a big M on the side. It's gonna be like a walking advertising, but no, it's just black and green. It's very tastefully done and it looks awesome. Uh, I have a feeling that probably at launch we'll probably see the weapon scans be rather like in lore kind of you know real more necessarily realistic but just more in tune with the art style and I think later on as the seasons progress through as I most likely we will have like a season pass you have to pay into uh, for Halo Infinite that I could probably see things later on releasing much like they did with Halo 5 with like the pizza skin the cat skin and different like, kind of wacky things like that because those sell more that's straight up and you know they're they need to make money to support this game and if people want to have some funky looking skins that's fine if you want to put on the weapon skin i'm fine with that now if you have like a vehicle skin that's like big pink anime girls with just like they're looking up their skirts or something like that then uh that's gonna be a little uh, immersion breaking though uh if it's like a weapon skin or something like that something kind of smaller like a weapon charm or something like that i'm okay with it ver devil asks do you think we'll get a free roam mode to explore the ring i was playing odst the other day and realized a free roam mode to explore the map could be interesting especially because of the open world ring Halo sounds really interesting. Funny thing is, I was just thinking about this the other day as well, as ODST's campaign, from what we've heard, is gonna be very similar to what we're going to get for Halo Infinite. As an in ODST, you start with like one section, right? And you kind of explore that and you expand onto the next section, then the next one. We're gonna begin that same kind of exploration with Halo Infinite's Zeta Halo. As when you first land onto the ring, it's gonna be like kind of a small kind of area to kind of look through, and then you progress into the next section, but the next the previous section stays open. Just like an ODST and then eventually you open up the entire world. So I would expect a very similar style campaign as we format as we do for uh, ODST whereas you have an open world hub kind of situation and then you kind of go to these different locations within the rings that you know either trigger, triggers a new mission or some easter egg or something like that and then transfer that same thing over to Halo Infinite where you kind of just start out with just like a small area and then you progress forward, but that previous area is still open. That's why 343 has been kind of hesitant to say open world Halo game, because when you first launch in, it's going to be kind of small and you expand out as you you know explore throughout the map. It's not going to be like GTA where you can just go wherever you want, whenever you want. And I would think a free roam mode would definitely be something that would be almost necessary for an open world kind of game like this. Now, the big thing is though, is how do you make that open world interesting? As if you've played ODST, it's, there's not much incentive to go back and just kind of jump into the world unless you just like shooting, you know, brutes and grunts and engineers and things like that. There's nothing really that interesting in the world to jump in and go after. Now, if you introduce some like boss fights that are just kind of throughout the world say like you do with like say warzone you have like those bosses that kind of come in every once in a while something similar like that for halo infinite would definitely make the world much more interesting so say you, you played through the entire campaign what is there left to do and you've completed everything but well, you can just hop in and just challenge yourself with some challenging enemies that would be really freaking awesome and that's what i would like to see for a free roam which for halo infinite which i'm pretty sure we will get euphorium asks what are your thoughts on sprint I personally don't mind it, but the best course of action would be to leave it in the campaign, but take it out of multiplayer. The old sprint conversation. Yes, this by the time Halo Infinite releases, Halo will have sprint longer than not having sprint. By the time Halo Infinite releases, it's gonna be 11 years of sprinting in Halo. So I think the whole argument of having sprint or no sprint in the game, I think it's honestly like a dead, it's a dead argument. Like I, it's gonna be in the game. It's a feature that with most shooters, people come to expect, unless you're playing Doom, which is like some high action, just like 
off the wall crazy action kind of game which halo is not personally i don't mind sprint at all i think in halo 5 they did sprint just right i think that's how you do it you add kind of a stopping power effect if you're getting shot if you're sprinting and you're damaged you can't recharge your shields i think there's plenty of downsides to sprinting in halo 5 to where it's a fine ability to have obviously they may come into effect with map design though there are ways to work around it it doesn't have to be yes or no it can be both i think the main thing is just making sure you develop maps well enough to accompany sprint while also making it less of a necessary ability and more like kind of a something to utilize when you're trying to get from a to b quickly when you know there's no one in the area in halo 5 i would agree that sometimes you feel like you have to use sprint to kind of get it just through it maneuver throughout the map quite often i would like to see it used more as a, just like a temporary boost kind of ability to have on your character so when you're trying to go from a to b when you know there's nothing in the way you can just get there faster I'm okay with that. And if you design the maps around the ability of just, you know, not having to sprint constantly, then yeah, I think it totally works. I think Halo 5 did a great, and obviously we have it coming back. I think we're gonna have sprint in the campaign and in multiplayer. Obviously, we'll probably have options with F Forge to be able to take off Sprint and hopefully change like the bolt magnetism or damage in a certain way to make it work better with custom games if you'd like to do it that way. Now, there were so many great questions within this community post, guys. I mean, like 60 plus comments I had on this, so it's kind of tough to answer every single one of them. I might double back and kind of answer a few more of these questions in this post, guys. So I thank you for your participation. I really do appreciate it. If you guys want to catch any information from me or be able to loot for the last few days or so, check out the videos on the screen right over here got a link to all my news and informational videos we've been out of the loop for the last few days or so thank you so much for watching i'll catch you on the next one peace out